therefore commend the organizers of this event, the Change Nigeria Project in cooperation for providing this platform to bring professionals in various fields of economics, politics, business, and so on, to advance the discussion on enthronement of good governance and economic growth in our nation. I am aware that you had a similar conference in Washington, D.C. on our independence anniversary last year with the theme, Nigeria at 49, the way forward on contemporary issues, with sub-themes such as the electoral reform, Niger Delta, diaspora voting rights, and the role of the diaspora in nation building. And this is why I appreciate the invitation to be part of this particular conference. Let me also observe that your mission statement reflects your patriotic zeal and love for your nation. The theme for this conference, State of the Nigerian Economy, Strategic Options for Building and Sustaining a Vibrant Economy, is also very relevant and appropriate as Nigeria envisions to be one of the top 20 economies by the year 2020. There is indeed a need to take a critical look at the present state of our economy. This will enable us to gauge and appreciate the level of progress we have to make. We have so far made and examined the options to take to strengthen our economy. I expect this conference to make significant contribution to that process. We have some key officials of, Ni of Nigerian state and federal government here, including in particular a crucial federal agency, the Nigerian Investment Promotion Council. Uh, well, this is officials of the World Bank, which is based on the um, notice of this event, but I'm not sure there's any here, and uh, other development partners of Nigeria are also expected to participate. Of course, there will also be Nigerian business people and professionals. Constant dialogue between public and private sector officials can only yield dividend for both parties and the country at large. Let me proceed by sharing some statistics that paint a picture of the state of our economy. The oil and gas sector is the leading foreign exchange earner for Nigeria, over 90%, accounting for over 30% of GDP. In terms of job, domestic jobs, however, it is not a major sector due to the very low local content, less than 10% of that industry. In May 2009, the nation's manufacturing capacity utilization was 36%, compared to 48.9% in December 2008. That is 12.9% drop in just five months. The manufacturing sector's contribution to gross domestic product GDP is currently under 4%, with hundreds of thousands of jobs lost over the last decade and a half. While the agricultural sector has shown strong, consistent growth, contributes about 40% of GDP and is the largest employer of labor, it remains an inefficient and underperforming sector. The federal government is consequently working on a stimulus package that will possibly begin to yield the desired impact on the real sector. For example, 200 billion naira and 70 billion naira have been earmarked as special agricultural fund and textile industry rehabilitation fund, respectively. Both sectors are traditionally big employers of labor in our country. In Lagos State, we are also working on a stimulus package that will provide breaks to businesses in the form of reduced charges by some government for some government services like approvals for property development. There are also several policy initiatives designed to expand opportunities for various professionals. Lagos is becoming the destination of choice for investors as a result of many other initiatives we have been taking since 2007. 
We have created several fora for fostering a viral relationship between our government and the organized private sector. For example, the annual taxpayers forum, the built environment stakeholders forum, the transportation stakeholders forum, the joint contractors and bankers forum, and the budget consultative forum. I believe strongly in the partnership between the public and private sectors as one of the most effective ways of building and sustaining a vibrant economy. A lot of things can be achieved through public-private partnership PPP <coughs> initiatives. Government alone cannot provide all the amenities and social services to deliver the desirable enhanced quality of life for our people. Providing the right infrastructure and an effective security system that will encourage investors to come into the country are areas the private sector can collaborate with government. Indeed, PPP is now a tested universal strategy for building and sustaining a vibrant economy. Apart from inadequate financial resources, the public sector also lacks some of the technical and managerial expertise required to efficiently deliver infrastructure and services to move the economy forward. PPP is also is essentially about risk allocation. Some risks, for example, regulatory are better managed by government, while other risks like financial may be better managed by the private sector. The private sector also has corporate social responsibility to the communities from which it derives profit. From our experience in Lagos State, implementation of the PPP has <coughs> enabled us to broaden our financial strategy, which now rests on four platforms, including PPP. The other three are internally generated revenues, multilateral finance, and debt issuance program. We have been successful using these financial options to substantially meet the challenges of transforming Lagos into Africa's model mega city. While it is desirable that Nigerian investors take the lead in PPP transactions, given their better understanding of the environment and somewhat different perspective on risk, the reality is that the significant amounts of foreign investment capital are, are needed. But how can a government, particularly in an emerging economy, win the trust of the international private sector to participate in these initiatives? Again, I will speak from experience. The answer is found in four key words. Vision, due process, accountability, and transparency. The government must have a clear vision for where it is taking the state or country and must be prepared to put its own resources behind such a vision in a way that then encourages private investors to risk their own resources. This entails that government cuts wasteful expenditures to free up resources for growth-inducing expenditures and programs. The tendering and award of concessions and contracts must be open and merit-based. We have already delivered or are in the process of delivering a number of vital infrastructure using the PPP model, with the most notable being the $400 million 50-kilometer Lekki Road concession. Government must constantly examine its policies and procedures.